Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Foliage. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. Today we are going to be talking about an extremely beautiful evergreen plant called as foxtail fern. The actual scientific name is Aspagrus densi floris. Now it's a perennial evergreen plant. It has these beautiful pine needle like leaves that gives a very bushy appearance. Now originally this is a member of Aspagrus family. It is called as foxtail fern but actually it is not a fern. Because this plant produces seeds, it does not reproduce through pores. Usually ferns tend to produce or tend to multiply by pores, but these tend to multiply or reproduce by seeds. The seeds will be present on the leaves itself. They will be red uh, berry kind of leaves uh, that tend to look like small berries, red color. That is what it tends to turn into seeds and then this plant tends to multiply. Now the mature size, this is a very small plant, the mature size of this plant grows up to 2 to 3 feet tall and around 2 to 3 uh, feet in width. Uh, it prefers a good amount of uh, light, bright indirect light. The soil has to be very loose, porous and well draining. Uh, usually this growing season of this plant is during the summers, it tends to get these white flowers. Uh, it had bloomed some time back but now the blooms uh, the flowers have uh, gone off and i think now it is starting to fruit or i would say the berries would be visible uh, let me show you it's going to be very difficult to see because they are very tiny at this point of time i'm not able to see it because of the camera but uh, right over here i'm going to mark it up so that it's going to be visible because it's very breezy and the plant is moving so this is where the uh, flower is as you can see this is the this was the flower earlier but now the flower is gone so now it's going to create those berries as you can see they are going to turn red in color they are just starting to grow so this is from this seeds it will start to uh, reproduce and grow so that is how this plant tends to grow now uh, talking about the care requirements the first and the most important thing is light now it requires a good amount of uh, bright indirect light uh, do not keep it in afternoon sunlight otherwise the leaves will get burnt you can grow it outdoor as well as indoor as long as indoor it gets a good amount of indirect bright light it will do quite well because here as you can see earlier this plant was not getting a lot of light due to which you can see it started to stretch uh, you can see there's a lot of gaps in between the leaves and the new growth because now I have given it a good amount of indirect bright light you can see the new growth is very very bushy as you can see over here this and this is also the new growth you can see how bushy it is these are the two new growth and this is another one that's growing so you can see how bushy it is once it gets good amount of indirect bright light so ensure uh, that you avoid keeping it in afternoon direct sunlight otherwise the leaves will get burnt Soil, as I said, uh, the soil has to be a uh, well draining. It can handle any type of soil. Uh, it's not very particular about soil. It's not very fussy about soil. It can grow in any type of soil as long as the soil is slightly acidic and it is well draining. Well draining is the key factor. You cannot keep this plant in a pot which does not have a drain hole or if the soil is not well draining, then there is a high chance that the plant will have a root rot. So you have to ensure that it is a well draining soil. Uh, watering. Uh, I would say this is the best part about this plant. It does not require a lot of watering. Uh, it is kind of a semi-succulent kind of a plant. Uh, it tends to store water in the these uh, roots. It has these tubers that it tends to store water in that. And over the period of time, it starts giving water to the plant. So it can be underwatered. It is a drought tolerant plant, which that is the reason why it is a very popular plant, especially in outdoor gardens, because it does not require a lot of watering it kind of does well in fact in my older place it was next to a pond wherein i used to water it once a month and still the plant used to do quite well because there was a lot of uh, humidity around the plant and it was doing quite well so what you can do is in case if you want to check when to water just check the upper layer of soil once you feel that three to four inches of the soil is dry you can then go ahead and water but ensure that you do not overwater it it can get rotted easily the root rot can happen easily if you're going to overwater it so ensure that you check that the soil is dry and then water it during summers you can do a little bit more watering because the soil tends to dry faster 
Now talking about temperature, it does well in almost pretty much all the temperatures. But in case if the temperatures are really high above 40 degrees Celsius, then you can get it indoor and grow it in a place where it receives a good amount of indirect bright light. Now definitely the plant cannot handle very cold temperatures. So again, if you are from a place wherein the temperatures are very cold, it goes below 5 degrees Celsius, then you'll have to get it indoor and grow it near a window seal where it receives a good amount of indirect bright light because it cannot handle frost. It cannot handle handle snowfall so you have to ensure because this is a plant that tends to grow in a warmer climate so it does not prefer a lot of uh, you know cold weather now talking about fertilizers uh, this plant uh, does not it's not a very fussy plant as i said it does not require fertilizers every now and then but if you want to add any fertilizers you can go with a liquid based fertilizer and you can do it now during summers because it's their growing period they tend to grow during the summers and during the winters they tend to go dormant so this is a winter dormant plant and it tends to grow during the summers now with any other plant uh, pruning is essential if you tend to see that there are any brown leaves or any stem is turning brown or yellow you can just pinch it off then with this it will help the plant grow even more bushy uh, i had recently done not recently but long back i had done the uh, repotting so it's still in this pot and it does not require a very large pot a small pot is more than enough because uh, if you're going to use a larger pot the soil will take more time to dry the soil will stay moist for a longer period of time which the plant does not like so if you're going to use a large container and if there is too much of water then there will be a root rot so ensure that you do not use a very big pot a small pot is fine now talking about propagation it's pretty simple to propagate unfortunately i won't be propagating this right now because it's still very small so the easy way to propagate is you have to take out the plant completely and then separate it from the roots a root division is one of the option that you can do or you can even grow it from seeds as i said those red berry seeds will come up once they are ripe you can take the seeds and plant them uh, now i'm not very sure of the seeds because i haven't grown this plant from seeds but i will definitely try once these uh, will get ripe and once I get the seeds, I will make a video on it. But as of now, I would suggest that uh, if you take out the entire plant, do a root division, that is going to work out much better. So as I said, this plant tends to go dormant during the winters. Summer is their growing period. So during winters, do not add any fertilizers and you can cut down on your watering. Now this plant usually does not get affected with mealybugs or aphids or any kind of insects but it's always better to do a routine check once a week or once in two weeks because at times you might see mealybugs then you'll have to go with any organic solution that you have been using. Uh, now ideally during uh, between the winter and the summer when the transition of season happens usually the plant gets affected with powdery mildew so you have to be extremely careful do not add too much of nutrients in the soil uh, during the winters obviously because the plant is dormant do not add any fertilizers but if the soil is very organic then there might be some issues with powdery mildew a lot of people tend to use baking soda I have not used baking soda yet but what you can do is just sprinkle some dry cinnamon powder and that will uh, keep the uh, mildew from spreading in case if the mildew is too much on the plant then they just cut off that section of the plant and throw it off because powdery mildew tends to spread very fast with the pores so you have to be extremely careful so this is all about this beautiful plant another important thing is this plant toxic yes this plant is very very toxic uh, including the leaves as well as those berries that i told you the red berries it's very poisonous every part of this plant is very poisonous uh, if ingested so ensure that you keep it away from kids and uh, pets keep it in a place wherein it's out of reach for them because if the berries are ingested or if any leaf any stem is ingested it can lead to problems and you have to seek medical help as soon as possible because it said that any part of this plant including the berries the seeds or the leaves or the stem if it is ingested it can lead to a upset stomach so you have to be extremely careful so guys that's all about foxtail fern i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep planting